All righty, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Subscribing to My Podcast. Because I have a new guest on the show every week, it's very difficult to get consistent viewership. So if there's one thing that you can do to support me and the guest featured on my show is by interacting with the video. You can always unsubscribe later if you hate me or the content. Without further ado, here's your episode with... Jordan Brooks is the director of the Multicultural Student Affairs Office uh, at Iowa State University, and he is also the owner of No Self, which is a business that promotes knowledge, wisdom, self-love, and fellowship. So, uh, and that and that is through the lens of an artist and a creative person. Um, but Jordan, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell the guests some of the important things that they should know about you? Yeah, of course. Uh, one, just appreciate you having me on the show here, but I choose to say like I identify as a creator. Right. Uh, my, my primary sense of who I am as a creator, I think that's my whole purpose and why I'm supposed to be here uh, is to either create space, create visual art, create opportunities, um, create community, create. Uh, yeah, just anything that's about like creating and taking. And I think through that, right, you learn a lot. And so I think even my identity as an educator uh, is tied to creativity as well. So, yeah, I'm currently a doc student, which brings my my creativity and my education together. Um, it's been so great to be uh, the director for MSA and the assistant dean of students, or yeah, assistant dean of students at uh, Iowa State. Right now, uh, proud uh, father of two puppies. <laughs> right, proud father of two puppies. Me and my wife, um, uh, and just supporting her and her business and things as well too. So that's an important part of who I am and my identity is uh, being a husband and supporter to my wife Jasmine and uh, her businesses and things as well. Um, and then just like. I would say family member, fraternity brother, Phi Beta Sigma. Um, yeah, just that, those are some of the things. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's really awesome. I wanted to talk about um, just to start so people can get a sense of like who you are. Yeah. I want to know about like your journey and then what brought you here and like the step by step process, because a lot of people see the finished or close to finished, but polished version of you. You know right, what I mean? Right, they right. see this person that worked for uh, however many years you've been working on it. Yeah. So I guess like walk me through this journey and then what brought you to Iowa State, what brought you to owning your business? What brought you to this revelation of creativity? Like walk me through how you. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it starts as a kid, I would say. So my dad collected comic books. Um, so I was growing up reading uh, all your DC Marvel things, right? Batman, all that. Some of my favorite comic books were Silver Surfer comics mm -hmm. and Daredevil. Oh, Daredevil. Um, so and then like Crisis on Infinite Earths. Like I don't understand why I was a second grader reading Crisis on Infinite <laughs> Earths, but at the same time, <laughs> hey. here we are, right? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> to each his own, right? Um, but my, I think my time then, um, and then my dad is also from New York City, and so I got the opportunity to like go to New York City. I'm originally from Pennsylvania, uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. But when we would go to New York City, I saw graffiti for the first time. And when I saw graffiti, I was like, this is amazing that people get to just write on buildings. And he's like, yeah, but you can't just go right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On they buildings. can. But right, yeah, they yeah. can, but you really can't just go right on buildings. <laughs> yeah. But my dad grew up at that time, and he was, like, telling me the history of pieces of, like, um, you know, folks were trying to uh, say, like, I'm here. Like, the whole, one of the big pieces of the energy behind graffiti is, like, I'm here. And for me, that resonated a lot, especially because at that time, I was the only, only kid in my family, um, and I was living in one place, go to school in another place. Then I would go stay with my grandmother and everybody in another place. And so I was constantly always bouncing between places. And I never always felt like I had my spot or my space. Um, and then, so then it became important to me to be like, how do I let folks know that I'm here? And so through my art and my creativity, that's when I started drawing, messing around with just like anything, expression, and people would recognize me for it. Um, sometimes good, sometimes bad, right? I used to get in trouble in school <laughs> a lot. <laughs> you're distracting people, you're not paying attention, but like I would just get my things done, right? And not draw all the time. And even now as a professional, I'm doodling in my notebooks <laughs> in the middle of meetings. And it's just because like, it's just how I think, right? Um, but my parents always helped cultivate that creativity and that exploration. They were always like, you need to, um, a, a quote my mom always said was, the whole world's a circus, don't you be a clown? <laughs> right? She was like, the whole world is a circus, don't you be the clown. So it was like, you need to know what you know, right? And stand in that, stand on that. Um, and so my, and my parents were just always push that. So they were like, whatever you're into, do it to the fullest, right? Um, learn everything that you can. And um, you just want to be able to be, like I said, you just want to make sure that you feel solid in who you are, right? And they pushed that a lot, especially because I was in a lot of spaces that maybe pushed back against who I was. Um, as a person. And so 
uh, they were just constantly pumping that into me. So I went to high school. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do graphic design. I started taking AutoCAD and random things that my high school could get, in, get me into. I studied psychology and art when I was in undergrad. I went to Allegheny College, a small liberal arts college. And what was interesting then was I was thinking, like, I'm going to take psychology so that I can learn how people think so my artwork looks better. Right? Mm, mm -hmm. And then what ended up happening was I was working a lot with young kids. And when we would sit and draw and whatnot and talk with each other, they would share with me more. And the more they drew and showed me different images, they would explain different parts of their life. And I was like, wow, I can use art to understand people. I can use art to help people understand themselves even more. And I got really intrigued by that. And I was like, this is interesting. This thing that was for me mostly fun and like my like, yeah, I'm here thing. I was able to take that a little bit further and like I can really help people understand when they say I'm here, who are they? Right. And what does that even mean? Right. Um, and so then when I got into student affairs, it's a funny story how I got into student affairs. I actually was writing applications to go to grad school for art therapy or student affairs. I was walking out of my apartment and the vice president of student affairs at the um, school I was working at was like, if you study this, you can have a graduate assistantship and we'll help pay for it. And I was like, say less. <laughs> you were like, yeah, decision made. <laughs> decision made. <laughs> Plus licensure for art therapy was like, you only license in that place. And you got to do so many hours. I was like, student affairs, I can move forever. Yeah. This is, this is making so much sense <laughs> yeah. right now, right? And so, yeah, I, so I jumped into that and was just like, yeah, let's get into student affairs. The piece that made me come back to my art, though, purposefully and to make it a business, though, I was working at Georgia Southern University. Um, I was in residence life. So like, shout out all the mm, RAs. Yeah, let's the, go RAs. Shout, yeah. out, shout out the RAs in the connection, right? <laughs> Working in residence life. At this time, right, you've got, um, at this time, Sandra Bland was just murdered, right? And so my students were going through all the things that go with all that. Um, and, you know, trying to make sense of it, protest and, like, how do we advocate, fight for ourselves and things and stuff of that nature? And like, all those things were a part of the conversation. Um, and I was constantly doing reflections with my RAs because like, you have one-on-ones and you're checking in with them. And one of my RAs was like, but how do you feel? Right? Like, have you made sense of this? Mm -hmm. Have you dealt with your own emotions? And it was the first time, I think, in my like professional career that I kind of got called out on the, have I turned off my student affairs switch? I had a supervisor who said, as a student affairs practitioner, you have a switch where you just turn it on and you go, I have to do the job. I have to do the thing. It's the first time a student like called that out on me. And I was like, man, I do need to take care of myself. I need to pay attention to what's going on within me. And so what we did, we stopped the one-on-one, grabbed some paint supplies, a table. Started drawing. And we started drawing and painting <laughs> and just vibed with each other. And it was like, I need to do this more. Um, so I always shout out to, uh, to the one who asked me that question. I always shout out to him like too. It was like, Jordan, but how do you feel, bro? Right. And we sat outside drew paint and just kind of felt for a while. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this serious. I'm going to dive into this a lot more for myself. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. And so I, that I was a lot. <laughs> no, that was, I mean, that was beautiful. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted and needed. And so um, how do you feel now then that you've adopted, you've kind of gotten art back into your life and, it, and it's kind of more purposeful. How yeah. do you feel like you're adopting that into your MSA position? Like, how are you doing that now? I know that yeah. when you do your presentations, it seems that you've drawn a lot of the presentations and those are really awesome too. Yeah. Um, but other than kind of those like, you know, surface level things, how have you put art into the, the position that, that you have now? Yeah, definitely. So I think the piece of where my creativity and my art can come into my work is that in a lot of ways you feel like you're supposed to be finished, right? Like, College, there's this idea that I have to be correct. I have to be the one who knows the most. I have to uh, exceed beyond my peers. And then as a professional, it's like I have, everything that I create, everything that I do, right, it has to be crisp, no flaws, you know, have the perfect outcomes, everything aligns, right, and, and all the data that comes after. Like you're thinking like everything needs to be perfect. But I think what happened for me is remembering what it's like to go through the creative process means that it's more important to just do it. It's important to just do it and let's iterate and kind of grow as we do what it is that we do, right? So even when I do a presentation, I go, all right, this was the first one. Like you all are seeing me do, this is like probably number 1,050 yeah. something right? <laughs> presentation, yeah. right? But all the earlier ones in my life was like, I, this doesn't have to be perfect right now. Mm -hmm. I will hone and develop who I am as a, as a communicator, as a facilitator, and it'll be okay, even within this community. 
speaking to Iowa State students is different from speaking to Grinnell students, from speaking to Georgia Southern students, Pitt students, you know what I mean? So it's like such a different vibe that you just got to give yourself that space. I think the other thing is I invite other people to go like, what's the next wild, crazy, weird thing that we can do or just like not the typical thing like that we can do with this. So if we're used to running this type of program or um, talking about a subject within the curriculum in a particular way, I'm always open to like, is there anything that we can add to it? Is there something that we can shift, move around um, that would still bring that same value or even more? Right. Um, so I think that's something that I try to give people who work with me the freedom to do. I think in another way, what I bring into the role now is that I love collaborative work. And it's so funny because I know so many folks cannot stand doing <laughs> collaborative things. Mm -hmm. They're like, if I can just get the project and work on it myself, <laughs> I could be done. I could get my grade and I can move on. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that same logic applies a lot when you go into your professional careers. But for me, I found when we could take a moment to pause and like in art, we, they talk about like incubation. You're not always drawing, creating and painting. Sometimes you're just sitting with stuff. Right. And then it allows for you're walking down the street and that random like shift, I don't know, and like color that happens like, oh, my gosh, that sparked something for me. Right. Or that's that random happening that uh, goes on between some different people. You're like, that's inspiration right there. And so for me, I try to help create spaces for incubation and for us to just kind of like sit and mull over things and think a little bit and go, um, how can we slow down, actually? Right. Our life is so fast. Um, can we slow down? And then the thing that we create will be 10, 20 times better for it. Right. And so, yeah, that's my that's kind of my wave. <laughs> yeah. So it, so it seems like it's not it's not necessarily like the art that you brought in. It's, it's all the, the things you've learned from yeah. doing art your life it's, that has allowed you to do this thing. It is. It's the pro now like right now on the other side of it though, right? Like I definitely have like I had a I used to run a program where we would do paint and sips, right? And the, they would have reflections with it. Right. And so or uh I was working at one institution, they actually let me build a ball pit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we built a ball pit and put this ball pit in the middle of the campus, and I, and like it's like this because there's this, there was this group called Soul Pancake, and they were, and I don't even know if they're even still around or if they changed their name now, but like they had this ball pit, so we built the ball pit, sat in the middle of campus, and asked people to come and talk to us. That's right. awesome, <laughs> right? Kind of unsanitary, but awesome. Yeah, but. like now when you think about it now, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but kind of awesome. I mean, that's really funny, right? They also let me like make graffiti, like movable graffiti walls, and so I would just take these graffiti walls all through campus and be like, here's the here's the prompt: express yourself what you need to say, what you want to put out there. And like, we just kind of build on it. And so I've definitely made it a part of like my practice in different ways to bring it up. But the most powerful piece has been the process to it. Um, and how can I bring those processes to other people? Yeah, I think the, pro I think the process is really hard because you have people who it's really difficult to see like where you are. And then if it's such a gradual change and getting better, it's so difficult to see where you've come. Yeah. In, in the process. So when you say like, yeah. you should be ex exposing these things, like you should be showing people this art, you should be showing people these things, like this part through the process and you feel like it's garbage still, but it's so much better than someone who hasn't, who's never tried. Who's never tried it. And so I guess like what motivate, what motivation do you have for people who are like, I don't really know if I want people to see the constru construction zone. I don't know if yeah. like, I don't know if I'm ready. Like, what do you think, what do you think is the line to where you should start showing people these stuff and start pursuing these things versus when it's something that maybe you should keep yeah, I Keep mean, working on. this reminds me like this conversation around like a sketchbook. A lot of times for most folks, your sketchbook is super private, right? Your sketchbook is like your diary. It's where you have put all the most random things and you don't necessarily try to, it doesn't have to be complete or finished, right? And so it has that element of, I don't, it's not my best work, if you would, like kind of air quote it that way. It's not my best work to put out there and publish it. Um, but for me, what's powerful about the sketchbook, um, so there's, I'm not going to quote this correctly, but there's a, a artist, a rapper named Rakim. And in one of his songs, he talks about like how I went and I go back into my book of rhymes in order to like make a song, right? It's like essentially he says mm. something like to that effect. He's like, I go back into my rhymes to kind of figure it out. And I'm like, if you don't have a book of sketches if as a uh, RA, if you don't have a th bunch of bulletin boards or program ideas and stuff that you have, or as a student affairs professional, right, you don't have just 
all the undone, partly finished ideas and things just archived somewhere, right? It becomes harder and harder to do what it is that you want to do. And the beauty of like, I caught a certain piece of inspiration. Um, and then you might have caught, and caught another piece of inspiration. So if I actually let myself show you that, you might be like, oh my goodness, I was thinking of this, but I was missing this piece, right? And then now, the, now we get to bring those wavelengths together, right? And we can kind of create something off of it with each other. And I think um, there's definitely the stuff right, that you keep private, but if, if you can allow yourself to go, let me tap into the creativity or the inspiration that other folks have had. And you look at it that way, as opposed to allowing somebody to critique my creativity, allow myself to tap into the other creativity and inspiration of another person. It might help you be like, oh, let me do that. Right. And that's why I try to create these sketch spaces too. Like one of the things I offer are, are actually open sketch sessions and workshops with people where we're drawing. And it's like, look, do whatever it is <laughs> that you yeah. want to do. I, I don't care if you're working on a finished project or if you're just really messing around in your notebook or anything like that, the idea is like, how can we just kind of catch this wave of inspiration and creativity with each other um, and support each other in that? Because it's, like it's like any muscle or any habit. The more you do it, too, right, the better it is. Mm -hmm. But if you are constantly waiting for it to be a finished project and a finished product, um, it's probably going to slow you down, right? I mean, I know I don't pump out a piece of art every hour <laughs> or even every day. So if I'm, yeah. waiting, if I'm yeah. waiting for things to be finished, I'll probably never get my ideas off the ground. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know, and there's kind of like this weird line of um, self-love and then self-improvement. Mm. So it's like, where do you draw this line? You talk a lot about creativity, talk a lot about like loving yourself and, yeah. and like working on yourself. But where do you draw the line of like, I need to get better at these things or I need to work on myself in these ways mm -hmm. um, versus I love myself for who I am. And it mm. seems like there's like, there's a really dangerous end on both to where if you like, you love yourself so much to where you don't ever grow or change. That's mm. probably not a great thing. Yeah. Just as much as if like you feel like you need to change so much that you're like depressed and sad. That's also probably not a good thing. So you. where do you draw that line and how do you communicate that line to people when you're talking about yeah. these kind of more abstract ideas? These abstract ideas. Yeah. I think of it like this. That um, if I'm actually doing the work of loving myself, not loving the idea that somebody told me I should have of myself, then it will be okay for me to continue to grow and improve. I mean, everything in life naturally does that. I mean, plants, um, animals, everything. Like, and they have cycles. And I think that's the other piece of it, too, is that there are cycles when things are growing, when things are, um, when things are dying, when things are resting, when things are coming back, right? And so if, I, if I'm actually thinking about who am I and myself and how do I love on me, there will, I think there will naturally be this idea to how do I grow um, and how do I, and it does, and it won't, again, won't, it won't be based in somebody else's definition, other people's expectations. And I think that's what it is, is you have to undo that. Uh, a lot of times when folks either go to any either extreme of I love myself so much <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. I don't need to move or change. It's because whatever the concept that somebody gave them of how they're supposed to be, you're supposed to be right like that straight A student or you're supposed to go do whatever career or hold yourself in a certain way. Somebody gave you that image and you're still trying to live up to that. And you're like, if I break away from that, I won't get the sense of love or care that was offered to me or showed to me when I was following suit with that or on the reverse side, right? If you um, get to the space to where you're like, I was constantly trying to improve. I'm constantly trying to meet this, right? You haven't, to me, I've found that you haven't found that like internal locus of like, this is where who I am and who, and who, what I, what I need to do. And so if you allow yourself to kind of sit with like, who really am I? Um, and you test that out a little bit more, right? I think in life, you do take the definitions and the thoughts of other people, but it's like clothes. You try it on. Does this fit or not? Does it feel right? Do I move in it well? I mean, like, I remember, like, getting sneakers um, or getting cleats for, like, football. My dad would, like, put them on, and then I want you to run. Does it feel right running in it? It might look good on your foot, but does it actually feel good for you running in it? And I think that's what happens with people is sometimes they um, – they're still working with off of somebody else's definition. And so once you can allow yourself the space and time to, um, I would say, maybe either give yourself the permission or maybe even forgive yourself in some situations that you need to, right, to just be more in tune with who you are, then you can do that. 
Um, I do that a lot with self-portraits. So that's like the tangible way I help people do that. Is I go, let's do a self-portrait project and let's do a bunch of reflection questions that I have around like, who are you? Uh, how do you know that, <laughs> right? What kinds of things have shown you where like the things that you believe about yourself, they're, they're affirmed versus the times, the things that you believe about yourself, you might've wavered or anything of that nature. Right. And as we do those kind of self-portrait projects, you get into the habit of creating your image of you. Cause that's really what I'm trying to help you do is you produce the image of yourself, not you live up to the image that somebody else created. And then through that kind of cycle and that process, it helps people. So Damn. Yeah. This is not, this is not a psychology major. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Coming right. Out. Those are the two, the two degrees coming yeah, together. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think that's super insightful. What would you have to say? Like, let's say there are people listening to this and, yeah. and they don't necessarily know that they're, that they're following the path that someone else created for them. They don't, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to dis distinguish that. What, what, yeah. what advice do you have for people that? Who and where? Yeah. Okay. What do you mean by that? What I mean is ask yourself a particular question about you and say, who did I get this from or where did I get this from? And actually, I didn't even go with when. Yeah, who, where, who, where, and when, right? So, like, for instance, uh, majors, right? If you're thinking about a major, who first introduces to me? When did they do that? Where did they do that? At? Right? Um, who, who is it? Who is it that was kind of guiding that kind of that idea for myself? And I think a lot of times when you dig back, people talk a lot about like your shadow work or going into like your dealing with your inner child. <laughs> Right. As you keep going back and you peel different layers and you kind of do that kind of reflexive kind of work, you start to see, OK, maybe there are other there are answers of who those other people are. And it's not just me. Right. Sometimes you find that it is you. So that's a good thing, too. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, or that you find that you found reasons, even though somebody else presented it to you, you found other reasons. Right. For yourself. But then you get to ask yourself that question of like, even though I found those reasons, is that really what I still want to sit with? Right. Um, and how I want to move in it. And so, yeah, if you can do that, if you can ask those types of questions of who, when and where did this kind of come from, this idea or even like beliefs that folks hold. When did I even when did I first like when can I consciously think of me first having this belief? What was the context of that? <laughs> right. Um, when did somebody when did when did I first have to actually live through that? Yeah. Or not, <laughs> yeah. Right. Because yeah. that's also a lot of like a lot of things is like. Some, a lot of things we hold, we haven't actually had to test it or go through it, right? Which goes again back to the more you kind of create things, the more you're testing stuff out. So, but yeah, so I think that's the, the thing that I would say. If you're having that struggle with who, the question of who am I, just, do, just take certain pieces of your life and you can break it down. Like I always try to do categories. So I'll go like, okay, let's just go with either school, let's go with your cultural, social identities, right? Let's go with... Um, profession type pieces or ha um, hobbies and things that you have. Like, when did I first get into anime? What was that? <laughs> right? <laughs> when did I first start liking R&B and hip hop and things and stuff of that nature? Like who taught me that? And then what about it spoke to me versus was it somebody else telling me that I needed to kind of dive into that? And the more you do that work, it comes, it comes clear. It becomes clear. And so when you go back to what got you into art, do you go back to seeing like graffiti for the first time and you go back to yeah. like not being able to pay attention, like because yeah. you're drawing so much and stuff like that? And yeah, I think when I when I did the self work and kind of thought through it, I'm like, why did I really like sticking into this creative piece? And it's because I've always been inquisitive, right? I've always just been like, let me observe the world and then let me try something like I used to. Like if my parents wouldn't buy me a toy, I would draw it and make it <laughs> myself. Like I'd be like, all right, well, how can I can like construct this out of stuff that I do have at home already, mm -hmm. right? Or, um, but also a piece of it was like I enjoyed people's response to the artwork. So there, and so maybe that's another thing to add. Like I'm not saying that just because other people respond to it that that's a negative thing and it's and who and it's not based in who you are mm -hmm. right of course we yeah want, yeah we want positive responses from people <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right we want to um, have friends we want to yeah. have friends yeah. we have connections and things right so i don't want to confuse that right but what i'm saying is like if if it feels genuine and true to you and it's truly the type of response that fuels you and makes you feel whole as opposed to you feel like you're constantly reaching for something to make it happen it's that and so yeah like that feeling of having my peers like, oh, what are you drawing? And like checking it out is always cool. Or just that piece of like, you know, my mom hanging it up on the wall. 
That one, like, my mom still has artwork that I made <laughs> yeah. in like fourth grade, and she's like, "I'm," she's like, "I can't even have it." Uh-huh. Right, like, yeah. "Mom, I made it." She's like, "No, it's mine." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's mine, and so like, but that makes me feel so great. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That um, something that I that I did. My my mom is like, "Yeah, let's hold on to that." Yeah, well, this I mean, this is a really awesome perspective because um, one, you always catch yourself just saying something. That you're like, I don't know how I even like you, you're there are so many times where I'm saying like oh, something that I've perceived as a fact. And I'm yeah. like, my dad told me that 12 years 12 ago. Years he probably ago. like made that up. Like, I don't need like, I wanted just to get you to be quiet. Yeah, so I can... yeah. Like, I, I'm hold on guys. This is bro science. But like, I don't know if this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then there'll be stuff like that. But I feel like for me, a lot of my a lot of my morals or my character is based on um, what I predict the future might be. Uh. So it's like um, if I continue to pursue this, I'll be able to help people in the easiest way throughout my life. You right, know what right, I mean? Right. And like, Got that's you. what I've decided is my value is to help people yeah. or, you know what I mean? And, and those things, but it's really important also to go back and be like, okay, let's start from the basis of like, where did this even start? Where did this start? And then we can go to the future of like, is this even, cause why do you even think it's yeah. important to help people? What about your life and experiences that I should, I should help people. I should do things that actively support another person. Yeah. Right. And uh, if you wow. ask, if you answer those questions, it'll be like, Oh wow. Yeah. Right. Because a lot of people <laughs> yeah. don't necessarily feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, right. I mean, that is true. That is true. <laughs> you know, and so I, I guess I'm trying to, I, I, every time I hear conversations like this in this sort of like self help, self love industry, because I'm yeah. a very like big self help person yeah. and, and along those things, um, I always try to think of like, why aren't people pursuing this? Or like, why isn't this like common sense? Like, why aren't people like, oh, yeah, of course I do this? You know what I mean? Like, what is the barrier that stops people from doing this? Mm-hmm. Or what is a thought process that is like, oh, no, that's stupid because of whatever this reason. Have you heard anything in regards to this? Like, I guess creativity in general or like Pursuit. going back, like, what do you think is the most common argument against this? I think a lot of times it's, I think a lot of times it's the pursuit of like, I need to, this idea of what you need to achieve. Um, it's just different. Um, we operate, I think, a lot within our society from a space of that you need to achieve a particular status. You need to achieve or acquire, gain certain levels or amount of resources and things, right? In order for you to show most successful people, in order to show that you're successful, it's about the things that you have in and around you. And then later we get all like, oh, yeah, but it's also who they are inside. Like, that's always like, the, the next the piece, last piece, yeah. right? right? Like these, the most successful people are these folks who do a particular thing or they have acquired a particular thing, but what's going on inside of the, with them and their life, we don't care but so much about that, right? Or if we do, it's like mostly to poke fun in yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. It's mostly to poke fun in it. But like most, a lot of really successful folks, quote unquote, like how we deem folks to be successful, um, oftentimes lack great support systems. Right. A lot of creatives, a lot of artists and musicians, like if you actually look at their life stories, they always have it's like the people who are closest to them always harm them the most. And it's like, what is going on? Right. And so then you and then you can see the demons and things that they wrestle with inside of, of, of themselves. Right. And so I think because of that piece of like we don't really. I don't know, maybe as a side, because we don't always really fully value who you are as a person as much as we value what do you do as a person, it, 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 shifts, it shifts that within our culture, right? Like, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, in school, people didn't ask me, like, Jordan, who are you? They ask you, like, what do you want to do when you grow up? Like, immediately, it's like, what's the thing that you're going to do, produce, and then throw in any number of different social cultural identities in the mix of, like, all of that as well, too, on, like... Your value is about what you produce. Um, I think it makes it hard to go, how do I take time to take care of me? I need to go to work. I need to go to school. I need to study. I need to get this um, get this grade. I need to get up and go, you know, push whatever hours. Um, even people right now, like young folks are like, you need to start start your brand in high school, basically. <laughs> yeah. Start your brand, the grind in, set start your right brand in brand in eighth grade. You know, if you're not already trying to figure out how to have two or three streams, two or three streams of income before you come to college, like, are you really doing anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, like, um, and for some folks, that's cool, right? right but yeah. for a majority of people, like, no, yeah, I don't yeah. need to do that. But yeah, I think, I think because a lot of What's um, what we're exposed to and how we are asked to talk about ourselves is mostly based in what we do and not so much who we are. 
um, it does that. And then also, you know, there's probably just the bad rap for the self-help industry a little bit too of like people go, because people expect you to have yourself together. Mm -hmm. And see, for me, that's why I'm always open and honest. Like I'm a continuous work in progress. I'm not great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I might be, I'm better than the last time, Yeah, but I'm not great. Right. I'm not perfect yet. Right. And that's fine because, so I try to, I try to live in that honesty of this is a work in progress. Everything is, is, is moving and changing. Yeah. I feel like it, I feel like it's difficult because there are just, there's so many people in the world. And so it's yeah. like, if you heard of like, you know, Jordan Brooks, just like the name Jordan Brooks, yeah. there's not much associated with that. Yeah, yeah. But then I say Jordan Brooks, the director of multicultural student affairs, there's yeah, yeah. something that there's says something. something about you. Right. You know what I mean? And so it's like, but that's sad, you know, and it's sad and it's hard <laughs> because it's like, yeah. I was just talking to somebody about this and they were asking me like, what am I going to do to like advertise for grad school and whatever. Yeah. And I said something uh, and they were like, but you need to have measurable units of that. Right. Otherwise there's no reason for them to pick you other than if they meet you, they can sense those things, but right. you need to be, you need to advertise yourself first. And it's a hard, it's a really hard pressure to have <laughs> like mm -hmm. in that. I could definitely see that leading to yeah. why people aren't really focusing on it creativity is. and working on that stuff. It really is. But I think, you know, it's also interesting too. like, I'm, I'm curious whether we're on like a, whether we're turning back towards it. Cause if you look at a lot of different, if you look at a lot of different companies and things and when you kind of break it down, like what they do is they, they talk about the value to you first or like you don't buy. I always hear this with marketing things like you don't really buy certain things because of always because of the quality of what it is. It's more so the value, the story, the thing that you ascribe to it. Right. And so it's like, how can you how can we kind of bring that to ourselves? Like, I don't need to lead with the, I've accomplished blah, 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 blah. And it's really funny. Yeah. Like even I'm, I'm editing my website and doing different work, like, people are always like, don't lead with the, here's all the stuff you've accomplished. You've got to bring people into the story and the human part first. And I think because we've been through that industrial age, that industrial age and that, you know, like, the rise with kind of tech and everything was, again, to the, like you said, to the, um, to the outcome, to the, um, to the measurable kind of quantifiable thing, I think we've, I think people are starting to get that sense of like, but what's behind that? What's, what's, what's supporting that up? Um, we haven't fully come around to it in all the way, right, with society. But I get the sense that there are more and more people who are like, yeah, I see the numbers, but mm -hmm. tell me the story behind the numbers. Yeah. Right? What's well, the thing under that? Yeah, I, I, I'd like to describe myself as like a chronic optimist, but it's like, yeah. for me, it's like, we can complain about, you know, this stuff and like say that, you know, like society is this way. Yeah. But I'd like to think that society is net better because of this yeah. than it was 60 years ago or yeah. 50 years, you know, or even 10 years ago, you yeah, know. And so um, we're still like learning how to do this stuff like now that I can apply to a job in Hawaii right now. Right now. That's like so different and we're not used to that. <laughs> and so, right? you know, we're learning and we're figuring out we're a work in progress. Society yeah. is a work in progress. It and is. So, it is uh, but it is important to like talk about these things and to be like, okay, how how can I advertise myself effectively, you know, to, yeah. like, get food on the table and, and yeah. do these things? But how can I also, like, be human, yeah, you know, and so. But that's the, that's the key, right? If you be your human self, right, again, there's a uniqueness to you in the way that you ask questions, the way in which you create space, even within your own podcast. There's thousands of podcasts that people can listen to, right? But there's going to be something unique about you, the people you choose to speak with, the things that you choose to speak with people about. And that's going to hit and resonate with a person at the time that they need it to hit and resonate with them, right? Like, that's just the uniqueness of it all, right? Like, nobody's mad that there's multiple trees in the world. Like, oh, my gosh, like, look at all these repetitive different trees. What <laughs> yeah. would need the oxygen, you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? So it's like, right. and, and so it's funny as humans, like, we do that to ourselves. Like, we have to do this very unique thing and stand out. Or can we do something that's just good, right? And within our locale, there will be the people who gravitate and resonate with that because we do it the way that they need it to be done. For them to have access to it. Yeah, well, I, dang, oh. that's so insightful. That's so awesome. <laughs> God, I love having people on here. <laughs> um, I think I think one of the cool things about that is that so many people are are motivated by not being able to produce something that's like a niche or something that's like yeah. specific, like you were saying, mm -hmm. and so they just don't do it at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, how are you possibly weighing that decision? You know what I mean? You're saying like nothing is better than something. Right. That's so crazy. But like people don't think about it because it's like, well. I might as well like do not do anything about it. And so I think, I think that's a really good, 
really good perspective on like just do it you just know? do and it so just try it i guess how many burger <laughs> joints are there <laughs> yeah it doesn't eat everyone loves burgers yeah. you, <laughs> you know if you love burgers make your own burgers make and sell burger. them I don't, I don't care right it's, just do it it's so nice as long as long as you love it and i think that's that's the harder part because mm-hmm. you know it might be easy to say like if maybe you don't know what you love to do maybe you have to discover what you want to do and that's yes. and that's the hardest part because for me it's easy to be like Oh, just go to college and start podcasting and then you'll do what you love. You know right. what I mean? But it's like, what if I don't like podcasting? What if I don't like podcasting? What if I don't feel like I need to go to college for that? Right. right. Oh, and so sh- careful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean, just kidding. Go to college guys. All right. <laughs> but yeah. But right. like, what, what do you, what do you say about people? How do you help people discover these things about themselves? Yeah. I think one of the, it's, this is actually really funny. I was just having this conversation this morning. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice. So, you were practicing. Yeah. Clearly yeah. I was practicing to get up here, but one, I think one of the things that we lose too early in life is observation. Like our, when you're a kid, you're always observing and taking in the world. And you're like, what is that? How does this work? Even this microphone, like what is up with this arm thing and how it's like <laughs> holding this microphone here and everything and it's not falling forward. Like you're like. Don't even get me started on Bluetooth. I still yeah. don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but right, you know what I'm saying? You're like, uh, how does all this stuff kind of work, right? And, but, and like I said, like as a kid, you observed so much. And when you were observing it, you weren't worried about, did I do it right? You're just like, let me see it. How does it work? Let me try it and mess around, right? Um, and then eventually what happens is you get accustomed to this is supposed to be set up like this. You get into your routines. You get into your systems. And there's so many things that you just ignore because you're used to it. One of the reasons why I did the ball pit activity was because, like, why is there a random ball pit in the middle of campus? <laughs> Right. It was such a weird thing that it would break you from the norm of walking between the buildings to go on to your next thing enough to go. Let me stop. Pause. What is happening? Mm -hmm. Figure this out. Do I want to engage or not? Oh, gosh. Right. Like and you had that moment. And so like what I try to encourage people to do is like find the extraordinary and the mundane. Right. So like things that you walk by all the time. Slow down. Pay attention to it. See something different about it. Um go a different way, right? Like if you walk this way to class, walk a different way to class. Go through some different buildings that you don't normally go through and see what shifts or changes or happens for yourself, right? And then the same same thing with like exploring stuff that you like to do. Okay, so if I know I'm into, again, like I'm in the art, but that doesn't, there's how many forms of art, <laughs> right? Like I tried pen and ink, I tried graffiti, I tried digital painting, I tried photography, I tried video production. You just mess around with it all, right? Like the sciences, like, my favorite sciences are like in high school and stuff or like physics, but I was like, I know I don't want to do this enough. Like to <laughs> it's stick with fine, it. but it's cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, just that. But like when I apply it to thinking like, when, it's funny when I think about how much I liked physics and then I think about how it relates to animation. I'm like, <laughs> well, like yeah, this is, the weight is obvious. You're like, there we go. Right. And so it's like in comparison to like biology and things like that. And for me, like I'm not super photo representative, like in how I do my artwork. But I bet you if I was really into biology and that, you would probably see me doing all the photorealism a lot more, right? Because of just those like interconnections as you explore different things. So yeah, I, I always really tell people like, I want you to slow down and observe. I also want you to like, whether it's a notebook and you are journaling in it or you're sketching in it, write down some thoughts and things that you had over the week. I think one of the things that, one of the, Hardest things that gets college students to do, but if they do it, is say if you journaled at the end of each week, at least. Give yourself 20 minutes and say, what did I do this week that I intended to do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I actually yeah. did it. What didn't I do? What was it like? <clears throat> you allow yourself to like write that stuff down. You can question things that you like and explore stuff more. But when you're just like going through the motions with everything, and even when you are trying everything, if you don't take time to reflect on it, you can't evaluate it. Right? And I think that's what happens is people spend so much time doing a bunch of things and not taking enough time to reflect on what it is that they have done to help them find the direction to go where they want to go. So, yeah, slow down, observe, reflect. Right. And like I said, like you don't have to do something that's super different. Just maybe just like a next step over. If you were messing around with pencil, use charcoal. If you were, I don't know, like I'm. Trying to think of like other, <laughs> other, other ways other, to describe other, like just things art. to describe <laughs> yeah. it, right? But or like you know like fields and majors or like yeah like if you're like I'm doing a podcast, what's it like to go from podcast to try to do this with the idea that 
it's a YouTube episode, right? You might think of your setup and the visuals and everything differently if you're like, the intent is for people to watch me have this conversation mm -hmm. on YouTube. And you're like, okay, now my editing needs to shift up and change, right? And it's going to take you into a different place, right? And you'd be like, mm, you might like it or you might be like, nope, <laughs> we're going to do this the yeah, way we do this yeah, here, yeah. right? But it was, a, it was a worthwhile exploration, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I, I think that's really awesome because I think people just don't, you know, they're not introspective. And I think people mistake being publicly introspective as being actually in, in introspective. Mm -hmm. And so it's like mm -hmm. when I post on social media about the things that I feel, yeah. That may seem the same yeah. as thinking it to myself, but there's so many filters that you just mm -hmm. put on subconsciously that you don't really know that you're doing. Yeah. And so like when I have a conversation with you, that's a different kind of introspection. Although I'd like to think that I've really worked on making it genuine, it's yeah, a different yeah. kind, you it's know? And so and there's, and there's not much I can do about that. And so um, <clears throat> writing that stuff down and talking about it, I've been journaling every single day for the last three and a half, four years now. Um, and it's awesome, you know what I mean? But I start to lose the effect, so maybe I need to start like changing up my journals and start <laughs> right. doing something different. But like, and you could sketch note just like the same way <clears throat> like my presentation. Mm -hmm. Turn a journal into a sketch note instead. Yeah, start drawing to that. Yeah, <laughs> or do it as a voice memo. Mm -hmm. What changes as if you're doing it as a voice memo, right? Yeah, that would be super. That actually would be super interesting. That probably help with my. Podcast etiquette. Because now, now you're critiquing you. You're listening to yourself talk like, I say, I'm like, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, click, I click my teeth all the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So, that, I mean, that, that would be help. But I think I think the general message is, I think one of the, um, I think, I don't know, one of the crowning jewels of yeah. um, my philosophy on things is that change, comfort comfort is the enemy of growth. Or, yeah. or that, like, discomfort is the thing that makes you grow. If mm -hmm. you're comfortable, you're probably not going to be changing or growing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I really like what you said about like change something, do something different. Yeah. It's a really uncomfortable thing to do. Um, and yeah. so do you, do you have any advice on getting people out of that? Like getting people out of that uncomfortability to convince somebody that to get, to get out and change it when yeah. it's so easy to just not do that. Again, I think the best advice is to like do something small, like the little iteration and get used to that first so for instance like um exercise right like if you're if you're liking if you want to get yourself into exercise and moving and things and stuff you're like i need to make this change for yourself like i'm not telling you that you need to go right and do like this bodybuilding program <laughs> yeah yeah nah tell yourself i'm going to instead of catching that elevator to go up to the third floor i'm gonna go ahead and walk the steps start there and then accomplish that, get used to and accustomed to that piece. Because then what you're working through is like what you're, there's um, now since, now that I've mentioned bodybuilding, bodybuilding is in my head. Yeah. But there is a bodybuilder named Kai Green. Um, and one thing I heard him say in a video once is like, you know, you've got to have a command of yourself. Like, can I command myself to do the thing that it is that I said that I'm going to do? And so what I think about like folks who want to make a change is like, if I'm going to say again, like, I'm not going, if it's, if I'm just going up two, three flights, I'm just going to go ahead and take the steps. Can you command yourself in moments to stick to that? Right. Cause sometimes you come into this innovation center and you're like, elevator time. I should take <laughs> yeah. the elevator. Yeah. But then and you look at the step and you're like, I could walk up to the second floor. It's <laughs> literally right there. But that's like, that's a lot of steps. Mm -hmm. Right. But can you make yourself go? Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and take those steps. And if you can do that piece, and then you can add on the next increment mm -hmm. little by little. Next thing you know, the leaps that you're willing to take can get bigger, right? Because you've kind of trained up yourself to be okay with the smaller kind of pieces, right? Like um, <clears throat> that's one way. Sometimes also what it is is like just jump all in, right? I can't front. Like so for instance, um, my first like large public mural. I had never done a large public mural before. I think the largest thing that I've always painted was like a, maybe like 24 by 36 inches, right? And then next thing I know, like I'm on the side of a building. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I know what pieces to do to like make it work, right? But like I hadn't done that before and a piece of it was like, go, right? But even, even I guess with me saying that, like I had already been doing Working little pieces it, yeah. to where like, even though it was a leap, it wasn't actually maybe as scary or as big as a leap of do I try to invest in my career as an artist? Like when I first was saying that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even, yeah, investing in my first, my career as an artist, I was like, if I can make a thousand dollars within six months of my art, I can push it. I was like, then keep going. 
this was like back in like 2015. I remember I was like, yeah, I was like, if I can make a thousand dollars between these six months before the new year, I'm going. I'm never going to let my art go. December thirteenth, I made that thousand dollars. It was like a thousand and two dollars. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I was like, right there, you're like, hey, I said I'd do it, and here I am. Gonna, but, <laughs> but what happens, right, is like when you do something like that, and when you do something like that, what happens is you're you actually make your brain think about how you get there. I think of it like animation. So this is probably mad weird for people. I'm sorry. But like in animation, you use like keyframes, right? So like, here's the first pose and then here's the pose that I'm getting to. And so what I like to think of, like if I think of where I'm at and I think of what I want to get to, I can do all the individual little drawings or all the individual little steps to get to that ending pose. If I know, if I have an idea of where I'm trying to get to. Now, like I said, I said $1,000. If I said $10,000, I would have to change what I was thinking about, right? To get to 10,000. Um, but for me at that time, that thousand was enough of a push, but also it wasn't too small and not too, too wild, right? To be like, to, to try it out. And so I think of that too, with like trying to change. Think of what's the, think of the keyframes, if you will. Where are you currently at? Be honest with yourself with where you're currently at. And then think about where you want to get to. And then what you do is you keep doing halves. What's the half between that? What's the halfway drawing of what it would look like to get to this piece? What's the halfway drawing of that? What's the halfway drawing of that? And then actually what ended up happening is you build up all these, as you keep halving it to get back to your original, you build up all this stuff here. So now you kind of, you do this leap. And it's mm -hmm. kind of funny, even in animation, like when you have, I can, I feel like this is mad weird. I'm sorry. No, it's <laughs> actually a really good example. Okay, <laughs> But I feel like, so what happens, right? Like in animation, when you have a lot of images, like the little images that are close to each other in time, Right it's really smooth or it can look kind of slow. And then when you make that jump, it looks quick. So like I said, if you keep halving what's the distance to get there, what you end up keep doing is you make those small little incremental changes in the beginning of the animation, if you were in the beginning of you making that change. So then as you progress to it, the jumps and stuff looks quicker. So if there are other people, you're like, it looks like, oh my gosh, you just leaped out of nowhere. But actually you had done this little slow build up and then, boom, <laughs> yeah. and then you hit it, yeah. right? Like that's kind of how that all works. So. I, I, to me, that's one of the exercises and things I do with people too, is I'm like, do keyframes, let's make it smaller. All right, cool. You want to graduate? Uh, or you're like, I'm trying to get X, Y, and Z GPA. Cool. What does it look like? What does that look like? What does your study habits look like? What does your management of your time look like? What does, um, how you're taking care of yourself and getting sleep and all that stuff look like if you're successful at that. Okay, cool. Where are you at now? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now let's break this down into pieces and pieces and pieces. Okay, what's that one little thing we can shift today? Get you accustomed to commanding that of yourself now. Cool, now command the next thing of yourself. Command the next thing of yourself. The next thing you know, here we are. Yeah, the, uh, that's so good. But the, the example that my dad used was, um, he wanted to start getting a habit of going to the gym. Yeah. And what he did is he made the habit, um, like opening the gym door. There you like go. He doesn't have to work out. He no. just has to like go there and open, open the, the door. door. And there was, and there was like three times when he was sick yep. and like he didn't want to work out, but he drove to the, he put on his workout clothes. He drove to the gym, opened the door, drove right back and went to sleep. And <laughs> drove right back. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, cool. I think, I think one of the things that people have difficulty grasping is that something is better than nothing. Something's been, yeah. And so it's like people who will start like a workout regimen and they're like, all right, New Year starts. I'm going to work out yep. every day. Some like ridiculous goal. Like when we work out every day, they do it for three months and they don't do it for like six months. Yeah. In that year, you worked out three months. Right. Which compared to zero is a ton. It's still a ton. <laughs> yeah. It's still and a so, ton. And so like those baby steps though, it helps with the like longevity, but some people it just does. get really torn up about just not being able to, yeah. like, like I'd rather do nothing than yeah. not as much as I yeah. originated. We got to get through, got to get out of that. And uh, even you mentioned in that, what you said about your dad with like opening, opening the door, like I do a thing now. I started this year, it's like, um, it takes me, I, feel, I realize it takes me two minutes to get up out of my bed, <laughs> grab a glass of water, go sit down at my desk, and pull my pencil and my notebook out. Like, if I can make a habit of just that, those two minutes, I'll probably end up drawing something, mm -hmm. right? If I want a drawing habit, take those two minutes and do that kind of piece, right? Today, if I choose not to draw something, like today, I got my water, I got to the notebook, with everything, and I was like, 
But I have a President's Council's meeting this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Time so, to go. But I did it. But hey, <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll be back. My yeah. pencil and pen. And that's the, my pencil and pen are sitting at my desk ready for me when I get home. Mm-hmm. So, ready so for you I, to write. So when I get home, I can go ahead and write. I can go ahead and sketch. I can draw, do whatever it is, right? Um, but even just the act of it, it was on my brain. It was on my mind. Because I bet maybe even though your dad was sick, didn't go in, he might have still did something different as far as what he was eating, what he was drinking. The other habits that follow with it mm-hmm. still stick too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And he's probably awake for the day too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Um, and so it, it seems you, you're very insightful on, on some of the things that you do. And so when you're working for the, like the MSA position, are yeah. you meeting with students? Are you like having one-on-ones? How yeah. do you kind of work your philosophy, your mindsets into your job? Is yeah. this something like, how do you get the opportunity to do this stuff? So what's funny now is that because of my positionality in the job as an assistant dean and then the director, there are fewer moments when I'm actually the person who gets to really sit with a student. There are a few, right? Like, so not not to, like, I do sit with students still often in there, and it's, I always invite folks to get on my calendar, but I recognize it's my graduate students, it's the other professional staff who work with me, um, who sit with folks most. And so what I try to do is I work with, like, how can I have those types of moments with them? So then when they're having those moments with students, right, it can be replicated in a similar way, right? Or they can bring their own flair and stuff as well to it. And then, um, or also, like, how do I create environments? How do I work to create environments that allow that type of space to kind of happen, right? Um, That's what I'm learning that I need to do a lot more of because of my positionality, right, is that I have to help create the environment for that to be able to take place. If I keep putting, like if if I have this, like you have to put on 15 programs <laughs> in a 16 week yeah. semester, <laughs> because I'm like, it's important for students to go to programs and experience things. What I've actually now just done is created this environment where my folks are in this constant quick loop of idea, produce, idea, produce, idea, produce, idea, produce. And I'm like, that's actually not necessary. Where like, if I'm like, if you actually go and do three or four quality programs, right, where you get to really spend time with students and engage with them, connect with them, the funny part is, like, y'all come up with stuff that you want to do because you like, wait, we can do that? Like, I, saw, I just saw your office do this. Can we do something similar? And then we're like, yeah. Do yeah. you need help support doing it? And they're like, yeah. So we're like, all right, cool, go. <laughs> yeah. Right? So now, like, instead of us kind of, like, again, like, going through that cycle, right, like, we help and create the environment for you to be like, let me mess around with something and figure out what this could look like. Um, but what I try to do, though, when I am able to engage with students directly is just be like, I try to always first, like, what's the issue? Can we get through that piece of what kind of came? Because a lot of times folks come to me because there was an issue <laughs> first. Yeah. <laughs> right? At this stage, they're uh-huh. like, Darn, I didn't like let me, what's the issue and the thing that we kind of kind of connect with? Um, and then my next piece is always like, all right, but what's good with you? Right? Like that's always a question I'm always asking. Like, well, what's good with you? What's been going on? How you feeling? Right? What's what are you, what are you kind of navigating and thinking through and whatnot right now? Right? Um, and then that allows me to have that space to kind of do those reflections with folks. And there are some students who have asked me, they've been like, Jordan, can I meet with you? Like uh, biweekly monthly or something like that can like we connect and do that um and we kind of have those reflective moments with each other and i always take them up like if i can i got you right like there might be times i got to reschedule or something like that but if i'm able to sit and have that conversation with you i will um or even if it's just like ah i can't do that meeting with you but when's that program that you all are hosting oh let me come to that Mm -hmm. right i'll come to that i'll I'll stick around for a little while and let's kind of let's connect with each other there um i feel like i try to give off that energy that like I'm always open to the conversation and to connecting. And I'm like, even if I'm in a rush, I'm not going to rush you. Right. Like I'm like, we chose to connect with each other and spend time in exchange with each other right now. Um, Something that a, um, a mentor of mine told me, um, she said like every choice to do something is a choice to not do something else. So just be comfortable with your choices. And I was like, I love that. Right. And so like if me and you are sitting like right now, me and you are sitting here having this podcast, I know that that means that there's meetings that I couldn't take because I chose to do this meeting with you. Right. But I'm like, I value that choice right now. 
And I recognize that what's going to happen from this is that other people might hear this, right? And some of the same things that they might have been about to ask me here, they can watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> so this watch is it. the screening process now. It's like if you it addresses watch. any of these issues, just watch the video. There you go, <laughs> right? But then at the same time too, right? Like it was important, like it was important for us to have this exchange with each other, right? And then now I feel good. And then now when I have that conversation with the next person, like it'll be a good, it'll be fine, it'll be all right because I honored what I needed to do in that moment in time, you know, so. What do you think are some of the the common things students are coming to you to talk about? And then how would you, how do you address these issues? And like, what yeah. do you guys talk about in these things? What, what, what does your role yeah. allow you to do? A lot of times what we're having conversations around, right, is dealing with meeting the expectation, right? And this is, and like, even though, and like I was talking about the expectations that folks have of you, and you've got to figure out how to align them with yourself. It's also true that as a college student that there are requirements, mm -hmm, yeah. right? You have requirements for your majors. You have requirements for your scholarships. You have requirements for oh, your, your student, um, student employment positions, right? Like there's all those things, right? And so what I'm always trying to do is help people think about like, how can you get engaged with stuff that aligns with who you are, right? Because if, I'm able to operate in alignment with myself. It's not as hard to meet the different requirements and things that folks have. Um, I'm always kind of, another thing I'm always connecting with people around is like people trying to find their place and their space on campus. And like I told you earlier, I didn't always feel like I knew my place or my space. I had to move around a lot. Um, I was going to multiple different types of schools and after school spaces and things. Um, and so that's something that I do kind of feel uniquely um, knowledgeable of. And what I found is like, the more that I'm just me, the more people will gravitate to that. But I think a hard part in college is you're still accustomed to from high school fitting in with the crowd. So you do some of the things that other folks were doing um, and you're still testing stuff out. So it's not that it all has to be perfect and landing. You're testing things and that's okay to do that in college. But what happens is right like you, if you get too caught in doing everything that everybody else says, as are presenting something that's not truly you, then no one actually gets to know you, right? Like you don't, if I'm showing you someone else, how do you actually know Jordan? And so now when you're like, man, none of these people that I'm hanging out with are really who I want to be with. Well, yeah, because you haven't been showing them yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right? and so now everybody who gravitated towards you are the folks who gravitate to the thing that you were presenting, right? Now, as you get more comfortable just presenting yourself, some of those things might shift. Or some of those folks might show you that, oh, yeah, I was cool with just who you was, too. Right. And so I think that's one of the things that I'm work I work with the people a lot on is like, how do they kind of just get comfortable being them? You know, um, another thing is freedom. <laughs> I think there's a lot of time and freedom that folks have as college students coming from out of high school. And you're like. How? What do I do? With... What do I do? <laughs> yeah. Are you telling me I don't have to be in class from like seven to four? There's a two hour gap in my day. Yeah, yeah. No one's telling me, like, there's not a buzzer that goes off and says, go to your next go, yeah, period. Yeah. Right. Like, I have to get up and actually walk over to Marston. <laughs> do I? Yeah. Right. And then, do I? Yeah, yeah. I mean, lead is right there. Yeah, State is right yeah. there. Right. And it's like, uh, so there's all of that, right? That also goes on with folks. And then if they get themselves uh, into a space of like, how do I, how do I actually like accomplish what I want to, right? Or uh, how do I live up to the things that I have for myself, right? Like with all the stuff that's going on, trying to help people make sense of that is a lot of part of what I get to do when I actually get to meet and chat with students directly. Yeah. So it's kind of just like a student counseling office. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's getting to know yourself and, yeah. and all of these things. And I mean, I think that that's definitely valuable and we could have, at as many offices as we'd like to do <laughs> doing yeah. that, you know what I mean? And I, yeah. think that, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and so as a, are there any goals that you have for you since you're like head honcho, you know what I mean? Like what, uh, <laughs> you know, what goal, what goals do you have? Like in the next five years, what would you have liked to have brought to um, MSA and what would you have liked to, yeah. what would you like to do? Yeah, no, nah, definitely. Okay. Um, next five years, what I think would really be cool. Um, so, I think of like, I think of the the timeline of a student, right, is for me, I think about a college student as early as eighth grade, actually. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. They're really, <laughs> working at the beginning. Yeah, right? I, think, I think of it as early as eighth grade within my realm or my what I have the capacity to like engage with, right? Because any earlier than that, I know I tr- like I can go visit fourth grade. Like I've visited fourth grade classes and done those types of things with kids, but right, I know that I'm not able to really actually be around with you and do things mm-hmm. with so much, right? Um, but as early as eighth, as eighth grade and high school students, I can engage college students who go and do work with you all, like with those younger people, and who can show them different possibilities of what it could be like. Like I can help set up opportunities for those young kids to see college students and then to then come to college and get, you know, like um, all the supports and things that they need to then go into their early career and be like, oh, let me give back to the college or give back to those programs that did this thing back for me when I was a kid. So for me, what I would love to see uh, come to fruition is that um, we have some stronger relationships with with uh, high school programs and high school serving programs throughout the state. Um, and we already have some great relationships mm-hmm. now, right? But we have some of those improved. And then what happens is like the the connection between the person who graduated and they're like within that first one to five, one to seven years of their profession, right? That we have also a really substantial way of how we're engaging you uh, as that first, that one to seven year graduate to engage back with the college students who are also then engaging back with those young people so that there's kind of like this cycle here. Big loop, yeah. Right, and there's just this loop of like how we're um, just creating opportunity and space for each other because like one of the truths is that I know firms and companies and spaces, they want to engage with young people. They want you all to be excited about the things that they can do at their businesses and their companies. And so one of the best ways is for them to be able to engage with you, right? And so if I can help create spaces and ways for that to happen fluidly, um, and then not feel like, you know, you don't want to feel gross and nasty and, st- and like crazy. You know mm. what I mean? Like that's, that's not the wave, <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> but you want it to be meaningful. And like, we're trying to contribute positively to each other and to each other's communities. And if I can help, if I can kind of establish some of those kind of loops, um, in those spaces with different companies and different high schools and counselors and things like that. And then like with the student organizations, then yeah, that's the wave for me. Yeah. That's okay. my thing. And so that's like, it, it's nice to. I guess publicly like talk about the goals so that we can all help you yeah. like achieve those. And like when, yeah. we, when we see what you're doing, we're kind of understanding like, okay, this is like where the target is going and yeah. like what the, what the end product is. And so I mm-hmm. think it's really important that, um, I think that's really cool too. Like if I, I didn't even think about like there, there being a committee that's dedicated to college students, but also reaching down to like the future college students. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's uh, I, I just, uh, that's an untapped territory for me of even yeah. like student affairs, you know? <laughs> so that's really awesome that you're thinking that far ahead and like doing that kind of stuff. So. I mean, cause yeah, think about like out of my office, there are scholarship programs that are for interning students, but to, to attain those scholarships, you've had to perform like know about, about them. You and... have to know about them and you have to have done certain, certain, certain things in high school. Mm-hmm. Right. And why tell you that your senior year when you weren't thinking about it? Mm-hmm. And now you're like, dang, I can't get that opportunity. Yeah. Right. So if I'm able to talk with you as early as eighth grade, so now you go into high school thinking about it, not that you got to stress it, but that you're like aware, like, wait, that's possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me fi- let me think. Yeah. This, Cause that can change the whole, like the whole course of what you do. Yeah. It? Cause like if you start eighth grade thinking like, there's no way I go to college and some guy comes up and he's like, actually, actually. <laughs> that, I could change your entire course of what you're doing. So. Act, right. Yeah. Exa- that's exactly it. That's exactly it. And even like, even college students current, right? Like when you come in as a first year student, we always tell you there's tons of things going on on campus, right? And if you, but if you can actually show a student like, well, here's an award or a competition or a, um, a recognition or a scholarship or a position that happens within your particular college. If you figure certain X, Y, and Z types of things out, right, for yourself, it would make it more possible that you would attain that. And because right now, like, a lot of times, like, if you're like me, I was a first-generation college student. When I came to school, I'm like, to me, I didn't even recognize the difference between colleges. I thought it was just, like, high schools that I went Uh to. Like, I'm just choosing to go to you. Yeah. Right? Like, the idea that there's a difference between a liberal arts college, a state institution, a research one, I had (laughs) no context for none of that. Yeah. Right? I was like, what does that mean? Right. At all. Um, and so then, so same thing, like high college to me was like, you get good grades, you move on. Yeah. Right. Like you, you gotta just accomplish this thing 
cool, you check the box, keep it pushing, right? Like that's how I thought about it. But I'm going to this liberal arts college and they're talking to me about all these other things. And like, I'm like, wait a minute, let me expand my mind a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. is actually happening here? Like, oh, wait, there's, there's other systems and things kind of going down. And so like, I think the more we can show people and reveal like this, you can learn anywhere, right? But if you play this game of education or you go through this educational system, there's something else to it too. And like, and if you can understand that, these other things open up for you, the more we can reveal those kind of pieces to people, I think the better off a lot of folks can be, right? Um, and you can make it just really plain to them. And so, yeah, that's my thing, right? Um, I want the kid who's eighth grade right now, they're already hooting and hollering for Iowa State <laughs> yeah. already. Yeah. They're already saying go already Cyclones. Started. They're already, already started saying go Cyclones early. now. Let's really help you make sense of what that really means. Yeah. Though. So when you <laughs> yeah. get here, yeah. right, that you can be like, oh, yeah, let me, let me, let me take full advantage of this, of this moment here. And then also... Um, let me help you think beyond just what happens when you graduate. But like, for me, at least five to seven years out after that, like, I know that's, that's the window I've got. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, this is, this has been a truly inspiring episode and I had no doubts, but, um, I'm, it's really awesome to have had you on Jordan. We're going to wrap this up, but I'd like to give yeah, no this doubt. final opportunity to do, um, any like plugging or advertising you'd like to do for, Bet. you know, like your committees and who you're working for and MSA and, uh, and no self and everything like that. Yeah. And then, um, just any final messages, the floor is kind of yours to end this one out. Yeah, definitely. So, okay. So plugs to, for MSA, um, and, uh, all of our spaces, I would say folks, please follow our social media. Now this is about to be horrible. Mm. Cause now I'm like, do I actually, do you know, <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> look I, it up. Look yeah, it up. Yeah, I feel like I gotta look it up now. It's like ISU underscore MSA. Yeah. I feel like that's it. Um, but let's let's do let's do a fact check on myself. Do I actually? Oh, I'm sure they'd remember. be able to find it if they just right. Googled. I think I was close though. Iowa State MSA. You probably yeah. You probably yeah, are. Yeah, I was probably close. I, I have to approve the things enough to where I should be close. But if you follow those, like our social media, I think that would be a dope thing. Right. And then you'll be able to kind of be connected to our different programs. Of course, I'm not getting like good service at this moment. No, it's it's the Twilight it Zone yeah, down here. That is what it is. But yeah, either way, look up for MSA social media. I, I will be hiring. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> uh, yep. I will be hiring student positions. So um, that stuff should open in like March. Right. <laughs> um, so if folks want to work with us, come come kick it with us. Right. That'll be cool. Uh, then, then the other side of it, what I would say is on the no self side of things. Right. Like I send out a weekly uh, motivational text. Uh, so if folks are interested in that, you can actually just go ahead and text me at 515-454-0733. Uh, Say what's up. And I'll send you a link to like fully sign in. Yeah. Uh, or if you text, uh, if you text fellowship, yeah, hashtag fellowship to that number. I'll send you some other stuff as well with it too. But yeah, it's a free text. I just send a motivational thing out every Monday. Because, uh, again, I'm trying to just, like, support people. So, yeah, 515-454-0733. My Instagram is, uh, I do remember that, it's no self, <laughs> K-N-W-S-L-F dot A-R-T. Um, so, of course, I'm always welcome to people following me there. And you can kind of see what I'm doing creatively um, and kicking it that way. But, yeah. Well, Jordan, it was That's awesome it. having you on. I'm glad you got to share all this nah, stuff with us. I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate <laughs> you for inviting me out. And, yeah, this was fun. Good. This all right. <laughs> Thanks. Cool.